A very good evening to all our viewers and listeners. We want to say thank you for making the time to connect with us this evening. We trust that you will be blessed as you spend some time in God's Word and as you are encouraged and equipped in God's presence this evening. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for bringing us once again together around your Word. We pray, Father, that you would speak into our lives this evening. And again, would you come and still our hearts in your presence? We've all had a busy day. We've all juggled through a lot of things and our minds need peace at a time like this. And so as you spend some time in your word, would you come and renew our minds and come and speak into our lives, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Again, it's wonderful having you with us this evening. We're dealing with a series on a Wednesday night entitled The Storm of Disappointment. And this evening we're dealing with part five. As I shared with you last Wednesday evening, we are in a rebuilding season around the world. Everyone is rebuilding something in their lives. We've all suffered some form of loss and we're all trying to rebuild what we have lost in our lives. And so along the way of rebuilding, we have to deal with disappointment because at the time of loss, you and I will taste a disappointment. We're either going to be disappointed in each other, disappointed in the circumstances that we have to endure, disappointed even with God, for we all had an expectation from God. We all had an expectation towards each other. And so often when those expectations are not fulfilled, we become a victim of unfulfilled expectation and we taste the disappointment Again, we've been sharing around Proverbs 13 and verse 12. And I want to read that verse to you again this evening. And that verse says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I really believe God's heart for you and I is to taste fulfillment in our lives. But so often, we experience the opposite. We taste frustration. We taste frustration in our relationships. We taste frustration in our work environment, in our school environment. And the, and the longing in our heart is to find fulfillment. And there's nothing more wonderful in life is when you expect something and it is delivered on time, delivered the way you want it, and it makes you feel happy and it becomes a blessing in your life. But life isn't like that. Life does not go always according to plan. Have you ever played a game, whether it be a PlayStation game on the TV or a game on your cell phone, but suddenly as you're playing the game, you, you lose another round, you lose some points, and before you know it, it says, game over. And none of us enjoys that moment when it's game over. We feel disappointed because we didn't achieve what we wanted to achieve. We didn't win the game the way we wanted to win the game. And so often that's how we feel in life. We wake up in the morning, before we even start the day, we feel the game is over, life is over, our marriage is over, our business is over. You know, I think my, my, my purpose in life is over. And we just feel like a, a failure. We don't see another sunrise in our lives. We just feel the game is over. And I'm here to say to you this evening, it's not game over. It's to be continued. Don't give up. Like I said to you last Wednesday evening, it's time to get back in the saddle again and try again. Don't give up. People are giving up all around the world. They can't process the loss. They can't process the pain. What they're struggling with is they can't process the disappointment. We need to try again. And this evening, I want to focus on the disappointment in yourself. You know, so often we can be disappointed in each other. We can feel disappointed towards God. But what about self-disappointment? When you had such an expectation of yourself, you had such a dream of yourself, such a longing that you would fulfill in your life and you didn't fulfill it because of something maybe you said or something that you did and you feel disappointed in yourself. How do we overcome that kind of storm? Because that kind of storm becomes a vicious circle in our lives. Because when you and I are disappointed in ourselves, and we're not able to process that disappointment, it leads to various thoughts. 
the thoughts that go through your mind and in my mind when we are disappointed in ourselves is that we feel, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to come across as a loser to people. I don't want to be seen as ignorant or unequipped. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be criticized. In actual fact, I don't want to be rejected. And that's how we see disappointment when we fail a test, when we don't uh, experience the promotion, when we feel we've tried so hard in our marriage, so hard at work, so hard in our relationships, and we just don't feel fulfilled. We're just tasting frustration. And before we know it, that kind of storm generates a fear in our lives. And that kind of fear starts to control us. The fear of failure, the fear of criticism, the fear of shame, the fear of suffering more loss, and the fear of rejection. I want to read a story to you about an individual who tried so hard all night, who was doing all the right things that he believed he ought to do, but he tasted failure and then had to face the consequences, but then was encouraged to try again. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me quickly to the Gospel of Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, One day, as Jesus was standing by the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Washing their nets simply implies they were fishing, they had fish, caught possibly nothing, or maybe they caught something, but they were now washing their nets. And washing their nets simply meant we are not going out again now. We're washing our nets to pack away our nets. We're not going out again. He got into one of the boats and the one belonging to Simon and asked Simon to put it out a little from the shore. Then Jesus sat down and taught the people from the boat. Verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Can you imagine what went through the fisherman's mind? This fisherman was a professional fisherman. This was his bread and butter. This is what he was trained to do. And he fished at night. He did not fish at daytime. And now Jesus is sitting in his boat and Jesus is saying to him, I want you to try again. I want you to put out into deep waters. Get your nets ready. I know you've been washing it to pack it away, but I want us to go out again. Verse 5, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and have caught nothing. We've tried all night. We were fishing. We tried every side of the boat. We threw the net out. We really tried our best. But because you say so, I will do it again and I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away, Lord. Go away from me. I am a sinful man. Why did Peter say that? Peter felt that he wasn't worthy to experience this kind of success or fruitfulness in his life. You know, so often when we have tried so hard and we've tasted no success, we can feel unworthy in ourselves to experience a blessing. When you and I are so disappointed in ourselves because of what we've said, because of what we've done in the past, that when God wants to bless us and the blessing comes into our lives, we don't feel worthy because we're so disappointed in ourselves it goes on to say in verse 9 for he and all his companions were astonished at the great catch of fish so they were in these in the companions that were together were and they need to highlight it james and john the sons of zebedee simon's partners then jesus said to simon don't be afraid from now on you will catch men so they pulled their nets up on shore left everything and followed him and i want us to highlight that, they left everything. They left the boat behind. They left the fishing behind. They left the nets behind. Because now they were on a mission, a new vision, and a new purpose 
in their lives. But what a great story. They had tried all night and caught nothing. They tasted failure. And now during the daytime, Jesus says, I want you to go out. But I can imagine the fishermen saying, do you know that we could be criticized? We could become a laughing stock. We could be embarrassed in broad daylight by everybody else. Because everybody else knows fishermen only fish at night. We don't fish at daytime. You're asking us to do something that is addressing our fears. You're, you're, you're asking us to do something that's overcoming those fears that are in us. And those thoughts that are in our mind. Those thoughts of, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be a laughing stock. I don't want to be criticized. Ultimately, I don't want to be rejected. But you see, Jesus was wanting to teach them how to overcome their disappointment. Come on, you're a fisherman. You know how to throw a net. Let's get out there and let's do it again. It's not game over. So let's go quickly before I close to John 21. Jesus now arrives again on the scene. It's the third time that he shows himself before his disciples after his resurrection. And it says in John chapter 21 verse 1. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way, that as the disciples were out there together, Peter said in verse 3, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Didn't we say that Peter left behind his fishing net? He left behind his fishing boat to pursue a new vision in his life, to pursue God's call on his life. But if we study the life of Peter, Peter experienced a lot of disappointments in the ministry. There were times when he jumped out the boat, was walking on the water, then he started to sink. He even said to Jesus, I'll die with you on the cross, but I'll never deny the faith that I have in you. But the reality is, he denied Jesus three times. The reality is, Peter was a roller coaster. There were times when he succeeded, and there were times when he failed the test. And so he tasted many times disappointment. And now when Jesus had died, Jesus was no longer around, he was disappointed. Maybe he thought that Jesus would be around a bit longer that he could continue in the ministry with him. So what does he do? He goes back to fishing. He goes back to doing what he used to do. But they went out that night and again they caught nothing. And it says in verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, who was John, John was one of the fishing partners of Peter, who was there with the first miracle in Luke chapter 5. John says, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed on in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore. In actual fact, they were around about 90 meters away from the shore. When they landed, it says in verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. You know, when they landed on the shore, Jesus already had a fish fry ready for them. But why does Jesus say, bring some of the fish you have caught? Because I want you to chew on the miracle. I want you to meditate on the blessing. I want you to process what has happened today. You were coming back. You had just been fishing all night and you caught nothing. Now you're coming back in shallow waters in daylight again. And I'm asking you to do something. I'm asking you to try again. You were disappointed last night. Once again, you went back to something that when you left the last time, if you recall, you tried all night. You caught nothing. You tasted disappointment. But then I encouraged you and I showed you that you can try again because the game's not over. You went out again last night. You tried all night. You tried so hard at working and you caught nothing. Well, the game's not over. Try again, but this time, throw on the right side of the boat. Even if it's in shallow water, try 
again. I want to say to you this evening before I close, some of you have been trying so hard in your marriage to make it work. You've tried so hard with your children. You've tried so hard in your relationships. You're trying so hard in your education. You're trying so hard at work. You've tried hard all week, all month, all year, all day, all night. And somehow you feel frustrated and you've caught nothing, but you feel like you're a failure. You've tried everything that you know how. And because of that, your mind is all over the place. And fear is wrapped up in your heart. You're fearing failure again. You're fearing to be criticized. You're fearing to be embarrassed and to experience more loss. You fear rejection. Because the reality of self-disappointment is, the result of self-disappointment is you lose your vision, you lose your energy, you lose your passion, you lose your conviction, and ultimately you lose your commitment to life. Now the Bible says my people perish for their lack of vision. When discouragement sets in, we lose our courage for life. From next Wednesday, I want to start a new series with you. I want to speak to you about the power of encouragement. Because at a time like this around the world, when all of us have tasted some form of disappointment, and we've all in one way or another been disappointed in ourselves, we need to be encouraged. How do I in encourage myself when I'm so discouraged? How do I encourage you when you are so discouraged? You know that in the word discouragement and encouragement, there's one word that's found in both of those words. It's the word courage. You've got to overcome your fears, the fear of being disappointed again. Disappointment is part of life. But this evening, I want to say to you as I close, keep this in mind as you try Again, as you get back in the saddle and say to yourself, my marriage is not over. My business is not over. My life is not over. I can try again. I simply want to say this to you as I close. Spend time with God. Read his word. Pray. Listen to him in your life. Number two, bring godly people around you. Protect your eyes and your ears from all the social media opinions that are floating around. Bring godly people into your life who bring godly input into your life. Number three, don't make it personal with whatever you're going through. You're not the only one. We're all failing the test at times. Number four, forgive yourself. Give yourself another chance. Stop meditating on what has happened and give yourself another dream to look forward to. It's not over. Try again. Don't give up. God is with you. I hope you've been blessed this evening. I hope you've been encouraged. God bless you as you keep on throwing out the net, trying once again, and trust God for great breakthrough. God bless you all.